he was a no-show. He was supposed to come here to 1200 Travis. He reached out to Quan LX to turn himself in. Dania got a call this afternoon saying she was no longer suspended and could return back to school. Still, her family wants to know how the district will prevent future unauthorized visitors. It was an early night here at the Chris Bell campaign. He came to the podium around 815 this evening thanking his supporters. I was out here yesterday as hundreds hit the streets and walked from a church to this gas station. It's remarkable to see how much this memorial has grown. Now here's a look at the waves out here. High tide was a couple of hours ago. Don, we may never know exactly how it happened, but today the district apologized and admitted somewhere down the line they dropped the ball. Fox 26's Ashley Johnson joins us live from the Fort Bend County Jail and was the only one to speak with the family members of that person. Ashley? Don, yes, I spoke with the man's fiance after she came from the jail, grabbing what little of his belongings were left. She says everything she's been told doesn't add up. This morning, she collapsed in my arms and cried. The former deputy says he spoke with an inside source who says the fiance has every reason to question if her partner's death could have been prevented. What did he do? I, we, we had a child as teenagers. I've known him my whole entire life. Ashley Yates is left to care for five kids alone. Along with grieving, she's now determined to seek justice. And now a former chief deputy says there's a good reason for concern. What is known from my standpoint and from my sources within the jail is that there was a two and a half hour, almost three hour period where the man was not checked on. And I think any uh, competent attorney that gets involved will have a field day with this investigation. Craig Brady says his source tells him whoever made rounds the morning 33 year old Eugene Etheridge died had falsified documents. Just a week ago, he filed an open records request because he believes this happens far too often. In this case, like several others in the recent past, the round sheets are simply forged. The rounds are not being done and there's inappropriate, in my opinion, action taken. These are criminal offenses. He says if the jail did what they are required to do, there's a greater chance this man wouldn't have died. Nobody can say for sure whether the man could have been saved or not if the rounds would have been conducted properly. However, there's a much greater probability that he could have been resuscitated and possibly saved had he been found in a much you know, quicker time span. We brought this straight to the attention of Deputy Chief David Marcarell. He spoke with us off camera and says Brady's claims are quote unprofessional, especially coming from a former officer. He says right now it's too early in the investigation to determine if there was a breach in protocol. He says they do take this death very seriously and want to see the full report first before they determine whether or not someone is at fault. The chief believes the investigation will wrap up quickly, and at this point, he says there isn't any, any indication that foul play was involved. Live in Richmond, Ashley Johnson, Fox 26 News. Well, Don, when I heard the name Pastor E.A. Deckard, it rang a bell, and you're about to see why. But people who know his track record say the last place he should be is at a school. This family, even in the midst of this horrible situation, we spoke with Pastor E.A. Decker back on August 9th during that horrible time when the family of eight was murdered in Northwest Harris County. We we'll feel the love of this community and the love of the city of Houston. And we will come together. We went right to Bamel Middle School, where Pastor Decker runs the Greenhouse International Church. Did you know a registered sex offender runs a church at your grandchild's former middle school? No, I don't. No, I didn't know that. How long have you been running it? For like five years, what are your thoughts about it? Oh, uh, well, I don't think it's right because sex offenders have no business around kids. The concerned citizen who brought this to our attention is outraged. First thing that came to my mind is our kids safe. Are our kids safe. How is this happening? He says every parent should be upset. Our parents need to know who's going in our school and out of our school. Spring ISD released this statement. Part of it says Greenhouse International Church currently leases Bamel Middle School for its Sunday services. In conjunction with our legal team, we are evaluating this lease agreement in particular as well as our lease agreement procedures in general. We have notified our Bamel Middle School community of this media story so they are aware of the situation. What, what angle? When we caught up with Pastor E.A. Deckard, he was not prepared to say anything. And he said he would call us back. 
Now, we have yet to hear back from Pastor Deckard. He said he would give us an exclusive, and we're waiting on that call. Live in the newsroom, Ashley Johnson, Fox 26 News. So I opened the lid, and I told him, I said, uh, it has something in there. And he's like, just take it. It's something any one of us could have picked up. But the woman who was driving around Umbel and found this box at a yard sale wants to remain anonymous. We'll just call her Molly. I said, how much? And he's like, a dollar. I bought it for a dollar. Wow. This is how much I paid for a lot of information. Alarming information belonging to hundreds of all Dean ISD students. And in the folders, you could see they have an actual copy of their Social Security card. Included in the files is psychiatric information with loads of personal documents. Birth dates, address, parents, name. If somebody else could have bought these, could have took them and sold these Social Security cards. And made a fortune and could have affected a lot of lives. Molly handed us these documents, so we wanted to go to all Dean ISD administrators to hear what they have to say. I mean, Mike, can I clearly show you some of this stuff? Yeah, I might put my glasses on. Okay. Look, Scott Crawford. Yeah. We've got we've got yeah. birth dates. Yep. yep. We've was got a counselor at ten years ago. I mean yep. psychiatric yep. files. We've yep. got ones with social security cards. Okay. Yep. I yep. mean, so this is yeah. personal, yep. I mean, parents' information, okay. stuff that, I mean, she yep. has hundreds of okay. these. She is uh, holding on to them, right? She's holding on, okay. but she's she wants a response okay. because she says if it. not, she is going to take it to one of these students and gotcha. take it up legally. Right. Okay, let me turn this over to our attorney and we'll go from there, okay? We handed over some of the files to Aldine ISD. Molly is hanging on to the rest of them. We will continue to follow this story and insist on getting an answer. Ashley Johnson, Fox 26 News. No clips inside your no clips. Life is sometimes far from a walk in the park. Ms. Johnson, you doing okay? That extra state savings will go. In order to live in the present, Ashley Johnson, Fox 26 News. You have to confront your past. It all started when I was 12, diagnosed with a condition called AVM, arteriovenous malformation, an abnormal connection between my arteries and veins. It's something we're born with, most AVMs. It's a birthmark. Many of us don't know we have it but they can cause either seizures or brain hemorrhages. Despite that dire prognosis, doctors decided not to operate. But several years later, when I was 23, the condition worsened. Here's the evidence. Look closely. That dark mark you see is my brain hemorrhaging. The result, a stifling headache, too much to bear. I couldn't even walk. Yours was probably much more difficult because you had a hemorrhage, which is out of the blue, you're sick, you're in the hospital a long time. Um, much more of our surgeries are elective where we know it's going to happen. Brain surgery was my only option. Doctors cut through my skull and removed the damaged part of my brain. When you're a, a child with AVMs, it can come back a lot. And when you have, are an adult, it doesn't tend to, and you're kind of in the mixture because you were diagnosed as a child but removed as an adult. Six years later, an appointment with Dr. Dong Kim, a world-renowned neurosurgeon at Memorial Hermann Hospital. He's the man who saved Congresswoman Gabby Giffords. So there's two questions that we're dealing with for you, Ashley, as you know. One is, is there any evidence that your ABM has come back? Mm -hmm. And do we need to worry about that? And then the other is, are you having some fluid buildup in your brain? Questions that could come with some very scary answers. Okay. X-rays can provide some answers. Yeah, see. The big test, an MRI. Doctors recommend one every five years after neurosurgery, and now it's time for my checkup. Ultimately, we want patients to be better off. Just like you, you had two hemorrhages, and after surgery, now you don't have to worry about it anymore. That was the answer to my prayers. Some patients suffer from chronic headaches, strokes, or seizures. 
Many times, life after brain surgery is an emotional roller coaster. Sometimes patients need a little help, and we'll set them up with a therapist because you can go through depression very easily, kind of a post-traumatic situation, and you just have to be aware of that. But um, if the brain is functioning well, the emotional parts can catch on, and getting back to a normal life is the best thing. All right. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Nice to see you. I know. Thank you. Oh. Till this day, I get chills thinking about what I went through, and from an emotional standpoint, many people deal with their surgery in their own way. For me, it's having an outlet such as writing or ballet, which you guys all know, right. but I can't believe I just shared that. <laughs> We're I, glad you did. Yeah, I can't, imagine, I can't imagine going through a brain surgery. I know it was six years ago, and you have to have these regular updates, and this is the first one you've had. It is, and it's just amazing that I'm here in the medical center with the most world-renowned, like one of the most world-renowned neurosurgeons, right. and he was so calm, and he just really made me feel yeah. at ease because I was really nervous during the story. Yeah. So you came to Houston for a reason. You I didn't did. realize <laughs> it, but you came here for a reason. Is it over? Are you in the clear? What's next? The good part is they can't rule it out 100%. And okay. like he said, my case is very tricky because I was diagnosed as a child, but I had it removed as an adult. Right. So. If you're diagnosed as a child, there's a good chance it could come back. But if you have it removed as an adult, you're pretty much in the clear. So I will continue to get my checkups, but for the most part, I am thanking God that I'm okay. As, as we too. all are, <laughs> and uh, your hair looks great too. Thank you, I didn't have to get it shaved for surgery. A Woo! lot of people, I, that was the first question <laughs> I got. They, really they cut into your skull. I mean, they that's... did, and, and, and at 23, I'm like, oh, why well, make it out alive? And by the way, well, I have my hair when I come out of surgery, so okay. I'm happy that I Good. got to keep it.